Hello again, this is Andy Gailey from Uptime Consultant Limited and Uptime Consultant Academy. Another short video about a thermal imager here from Hike Micro, a Chinese based company. I've been kindly lent these by a company called CBM Partners here in the UK to actually go out and do independent testing on with some of my clients, which we did yesterday and uh, a few few days ago on Friday and we test these back to back and this one is the from the M series it's called the M60 we previously I did a video as well on the M11 which is um, below this model exactly the same um, form factor so they both share the same body Um, the software and internals are obviously going to be the same and especially if we just flip the lens cover up on the M60 and the lens cover up on the M11 we'll see the difference straight away we want to know what an IR sensor looks like basically <coughs> the one on the right there is a quite small sensor um, and you can see the one on the left uh, more resolution out of that because it's a larger sensor and while we're here we can see there's the LED lamp on the on your left hand side there and on the right is the visual um, imager so to take photographs and then in the middle there's a laser pointer so uh, let's just see if we can let's turn these on anyway and we click while they boot up all images take um, a few seconds to boot up and to calibrate themselves and uh, what we'll do here as well is we'll, uh, we'll be looking at the differences as there are some marked differences between these two images so let's look at LED uh, laser sorry, lights so they both have laser pointers this is worthwhile if you're looking inside electrical cabinets you want to know exactly where you are targeting you target it with the laser pointer and that's where you can see the center of your images because it puts a center point on to tell you where you're looking we'll um we'll power down the m11 again because we've already looked at that one just wanted to show you the same form factor and uh, we'll write it as well They've got the same type of NICAD batteries in the handle. Two batteries with each device. Previously we also looked at, if you want to go and look at this video, this is a starter device. Um, again, LED um, lamp. This is the IR imager and this is the um, standard kind of, takes a, a standard image. One power input couple of small speakers to to uh, give high level bleeps and it's only got two external controls there's a power on and off off button here and then the other one here is capture um, so press it once captures the image press it a long press and it will start video recording uh, that's called the the pocket e you can see that the pocket e very very small so we actually got a mount on the bottom which is amazing got a, a mount for a tripod uh, very compact I say uh, fitted in your pocket go and have a look at the video so let's get to back to the M60 now the first thing I can say when we tested this I tested this with four engineers from a utilities department on Friday and then test it with four asset care engineers yesterday this was their favorite imager that uh, we looked at and we looked at them with an open mind um, but the main things we were looking at really as engineers in a factory was the focal uh, field of view um, of the images and I'll, I'll probably put a photograph up here in the bottom left to show you them side by side as we did the testing then you'll understand that the, the focal the field of view of these images is very different if you look at the M11 um, video it's pretty much the same all these controls are the same so if we press OK um, we can either use it I like using the physical controls but if you don't want to 
you can use the touch screen so we can go to albums press on albums and we can uh, cursor along or down uh, we actually we were doing it the, the session yesterday took place in um, a conference room and our, our our only asset of interest really was this coffee making machine because it had got a, a hot area obviously and a, a cold area so we can see there we're, we're about one and a half meters away from that we can get the whole coffee machine in there if you saw off the other comparative shot with the with the m11 you can't do that the the focal range is so tight on the field of view that you can't get um, a decent image at a decent dis distance away go back again to the oh let's go back again let's get out of the albums which we can do like this um, so again same as the m11 video we've got temperature measurements connections display settings capture so if we go in here we can put all our usual values in the training session i did yesterday advised them all of these values we should be thinking about like emissivity reflected temperature being aware of the distance and the humidity factors um, and we can put alarm settings in here if we wish to give us high and low alarms uh, connections wise the, this actually works i've used this to download uh, images from the file via a hotspot i haven't used the bluetooth apparently you can pair it with bluetooth earphones if you want to hear um, the voice you can put voice annotated notes on um, you can apparently also uh, screencast it or connect it to a network um, i haven't used the software uh, the it's ms and i only do ios so i haven't used the software but i have used the app um, so all of our status icons are on so we see everything on the screen but if you want you can turn that brand logo off or uh, the, the dates capture settings this is for the um, visual imager i've got it set on uh, eight megapixels gives us the best image um, we can capture uh, mp4 files in for videos um, let's come out of that again device settings um, we can adjust our screen brightness up or down we can choose our units of temperature kelvin degrees fahrenheit or celsius well we're celsius here uh, for americans you want fahrenheit and i'm um, setting meters not feet all very intuitive set your language set your time and date i've actually i think i've got to set on 10 minutes i know it's closed we can set on a 10 minute timer so it closes down um, right so that's that bit of the settings we've had a quick look at the f albums which is the files where you capture um, we can see i've actually got it set here on on a, a fusion setting so i can actually see some of the detail on that mouse map so if we go to fusion and the, the, one of the guys yesterday was asking about this um, the there's a parallax correction so if you are standing a different distance away from an asset and the fusion doesn't line up you can change the parallax so that the visual image aligns with your thermal image or well, if we go actually go left there we've got pure thermal so we don't get any fusion image so uh, that's what we had to live with 15 years ago i suppose before we got fusion images we've got picture in picture which is always a nice one if you're only interested in the the center of the frame and you want to understand where you were looking at when you took that image then picture in picture is a useful one back to there here um, this one is a blending one i don't know whether i'll ever use it you can blend the thermal image by 25 50 or 75 percent so I don't know whether I'd use that and then that's the visual image so just showing you what we're seeing um, there's also a function where you swipe swipe down the, the screen after it's calibrated all images do that they all pause and calibrate occasionally um, let's calibrate the sensor we can um, 
we can wind up the screen brightness here. Uh, we can turn the Wi-Fi on, turn the, the LED lamp on here. We can also, if we want, have white screen. Well, we're going to save power, so we'll have, we'll have dark screen. And we've also got a hotspot and the Bluetooth set here. And I think that's for screencasting. Got 72% battery here. Now, bearing in mind, we played with this yesterday uh, for about an hour and a half, I think, the, the device was on. And then probably another hour or so um, the other day. And again, we're only 72% battery. The batteries in this one, um, on a full charge, will last apparently four hours a piece. So you've got eight hours of battery charge you can carry with you. The other buttons are for, this is manual calibrate. So if you ever want to, well, it's actually calibrated now uh, automatically. But if you ever want to calibrate that, you can press here. This is the return button. Uh, this one, uh, this one up here is that light button. Again, we can turn it on from here or from the, the drop down screen. Uh, this one here with a little uh, magnifier on it. If we're looking at, um, let's actually go into thermal so we can see it better. Go back into thermal and we will choose fusion. And we're okay with the correction. Uh, this one here, so if I put it on that UP of uptime there and then start pressing this uh, pressing this button and then if we uh, press it to the right it will digitally zoom in to a point of interest uh, up to eight times digital zoom. Now uh, how useful that is, I, I haven't really tested it in the real world. What it does, it digitally zooms, so you lose some clarity, uh, but you're getting closer to your uh, your asset. So I think I might use it um, if I was around a robot in a cage and wanted to take an image through the, through the cage and I was a few metres away, then I might want to use it there. At the moment we've got uh, point 0.1 and a central spot on there. So you can see they're both at 22, that's what it is in the room. Um, if we want to, let's come out of there again. If we want to, we can put uh, a measurement point on. So that the one at the end there is to clear when we're on. And this one we can put uh, a hot spot in, or a cold spot in, or a center spot in. We've got a center spot in. So there, it's gone. Press it, goes off. Press it back, goes on. So we'll turn the center off. Let's put a hot spot in. And let's go back. Now you can see that hot spot's actually tracking up the top there. Because behind that cover is my iMac, which is on standby. So it's, it knows there's something warm behind that cover. Um, the next one along is palettes. So palettes is where we can uh, get all fancy with our uh, visual displays. I use Iron Bow and Rainbow because I'm old school. I prefer the uh, the look of Iron Bow and Rainbow, but we can have um, white hot or, or, or black hot or blue red, which is a bit funky. Let me put my hand in there. It's a bit, a bit strange bit out of focus there. The, the focusing on this by the way is, is manual, fully manual. So it's like an SLR. Um, go and focus on your point of interest and then I can't do both at the moment. Let's have a look. So yeah, um, we were on pallets weren't we? So here's pallets. Um, yeah, Rainbow and Iron Bow, my favourites. Red Hot Fusion, it's confusing, and Rain. So that's about it really for the controls. Um, I think I've showed you everything. You can do obviously all these controls as well uh, via the touch screen. I'm going to go back to, it's hurting my eyes even. Let's go back to Rainbow. 
yeah, you can use the controls here uh, on the screen. So if we wanted to go, say we go to temperature here, I'm on, more, I'm on auto at the moment, but I might want to go manual. So now I can adjust the midpoint there on, on the screen. Um, and it will also, you can also adjust the, the upper and lower limits on that. So again, I can do it by cursor. So I'll go back to auto, auto. I found it uh, in use yesterday and last Friday that uh, to use one thumb was the easiest way to navigate this um, this screen. It just felt felt comfortable. So it's by Hike Micro. I think I've covered everything. Um, some of the guys said they didn't like the very very plasticky feel, uh, but there are rubberized pieces on the grip. Um, I quite like the kind of positive catch on that to protect that. There's a tripod mount here. Uh, there's your mini SD storage in there and the power uh, cable output there as well. So that's basically it for the M60. I will be during this you'll be seeing some obviously some photographs come up that are comparative with the uh, m11 because the the main thing that we find is that although they look the same they feel the same uh, they're the similar weight they're both about 600 and this one's 680 gram the other one's 660 gram um, the box which again i'll put with well, you'll be seeing on the screen grab somewhere the the box weight is uh, three kilos so and it's not very big to carry around it's kind of like a, a design based on a pelly case i'll also put up here uh, the uh, cbm cbm um, partners limited so you can uh, go find them they they're the ones that kind of left uh, lent me these um these devices it's a dual battery charge comes with it also just you, you plug it into your wherever your area is, multi-charger, and uh, yeah, two NICADs, one in, one in the handle, one there. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to find out more about me, Andy Gailey at Uptime Consultant, you can always go to this. You can find me on LinkedIn, I'm always active on LinkedIn. And I think if you're in the UK, um, I'm sure CBM partners would love a phone call from you to inquire further about this these this imager or the other images that we've looked at so thanks very much for your time have a great day Thank you.